to another GCSE Economics video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on evaluating the costs of supply-side policies. Supply-side policies come with a variety of associated costs. These include financial costs, time lags, opposition to policies, income inequality, and other unintended consequences. Supply-side projects can be extremely expensive. The recently completed Elizabeth Line cost £18.9 billion after starting out with a budget of £14.8 billion. HS2 Phase 1 is currently expected to cost around £45 billion. In its recent disputes over nurses' pay, the government has suggested that it would cost £700 million for each 1% rise to nurses' pay. Although these figures are disputed by independent bodies, there is no doubt that the cost would be very high to raise nurses' pay. For all large financial outlays, there is an opportunity cost. That is, if the government chooses to spend more in one area, they must either spend less in another area, or raise taxes or increase debt. Supply-side projects can take a long time before you can reap the benefits that you're hoping to. Both the Elizabeth Line and HS2 are projects that take years to complete. When the government invests in training initiatives in areas of high demand, such as teaching and nursing, it takes time for those trainees to become part of the workforce. This is because they first have to study for several years before they can graduate and get a job. When an industry is privatised, it can take time to see the benefits of competition. This is because new firms can face initial very high costs to get set up, and it can take a while for a few firms to get embedded and become competitive. Some supply side policies will be met with opposition. For instance, when the government wants to reduce benefits, groups like charities and churches will speak out on behalf of the least well off in society. Trade unions and their members will oppose policies that lead to reducing the power of unions. This means that attempts to crack down hard on trade unions may actually have the opposite effect and lead to increased amounts of industrial action. Firms might also object to competition policy because of its effect on their profits. The CMA blocked a merger between Sainsbury's and ASDA, and both of these firms were very disappointed about the effects on their profit levels. They've both since had to go back to the drawing board and try to formulate how they can increase their profits without the benefit of the merger. When the government reduces benefits, they are taking money away from the poorest in society and increasing the gap between rich and poor. Similarly, when the government reduces income tax, those that earn more will benefit to a greater degree. This also increases the gap between rich and poor. There can also be other unintended consequences. For instance, if income tax is lowered, instead of working more, people may decide they would prefer to work less for the same income. So in fact, what we've done is reduced supply instead of increasing it. That brings us to the end of this video evaluating the costs of supply side policies. Join me in the next video when I'll be evaluating the benefits of supply side policies. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics and until next time, it's bye for now.